the welcome to Whispering Pine sign was askew, its rusty frame groaning in the perpetual Wyoming wind. Dust devils danced across the cracked asphalt of the deserted two-lane highway, the only evidence of movement in the entire town. The last gas station, boarded up and tagged with faded gang symbols, mocked my dwindling fuel gauge. Coming to Whispering Pines wasn't my idea. It was Sarah's. My girlfriend, ever the history buff, had stumbled upon a forgotten article about a utopian socialist experiment from the 1920s. Whispering Pines, it claimed, was a haven built by disillusioned intellectuals, a place where equality and harmony reigned. Except, the article ended abruptly, hinting at a mysterious disappearance of the entire population just five years later. Think of the stories, Sarah had enthused, her eyes sparkling with adventure. A ghost town with a dark secret? It'll be like a real-life Scooby-Doo episode. Famous last words. The town stretched out before me like a skeletal hand, its houses gaunt and hollow-eyed under the relentless sun. Every building was identical, two-story, with peeling white paint and boarded-up windows. The silence was suffocating, broken only by the mournful creak of the ever-present wind. Even the tumbleweeds seemed to avoid this place. Sweat prickled my skin despite the cool air. This wasn't just unnerving, it felt wrong. A primal instinct screamed at me to turn around and get out. But Sarah was already out of the car, snapping pictures with a manic glee that did little to ease my unease. Spooky, right? She said, her voice echoing eerily in the stillness. Spooky. I managed, forcing a smile. The main street, if you could call it that, was a dusty path lined with these skeletal houses. We walked down the middle, the crunching of gravel underfoot our only sound. Every house looked exactly the same except for one. A single red door marred the uniformity, standing out like a bloody wound. The article mentioned something about a red door, Sarah said, her voice hushed. A shiver ran down my spine. We exchanged a look, a silent question hanging in the air. Did we dare go in? Maybe it's just a shed, I offered, my voice barely above a whisper. There's no point turning back now, right? Sarah's smile was strained. Let's just peek. We approached the door cautiously. It creaked open with a rusty groan revealing a dimly lit hallway. The smell hit me first, a thick, cloying sweetness that stung the back of my throat. Tentatively, we stepped inside. The hallway was narrow, the air stale and heavy. Cobwebs draped the walls like macabre tapestries. At the end, a single candle flickered on a dusty table casting long, distorted shadows. Hello, Sarah called tentatively. Our voices echoed back in the oppressive silence. Suddenly a draft blew out the candle, plunging us into darkness. Sarah, I whispered, reaching out for her hand. Here, she answered, her voice trembling. We fumbled in the darkness, hearts pounding in our chests. Then, a low sound started. A rhythmic tapping, like a fingernail scratching on wood. It seemed to come from all around us, growing louder, faster. Panic clawed at my throat. I grabbed Sarah's hand and pulled her toward where I thought the door was. My fingers brushed against something cold and smooth, the doorknob. With a desperate jerk, I flung the door open. But it hit something with a sickening thud. Sarah! I screamed. No answer. The tapping had stopped. In the inky blackness, a new sound emerged, a soft, rhythmic breathing right next to my ear. My blood ran cold. I stumbled back, tripping over something soft in the darkness. A strangled cry escaped my throat. The breathing stopped. My heart hammered in my chest, a frantic drum solo against the oppressive silence. Slowly, I reached out, my fingers trembling groping for the source of the sound. My hand brushed against fabric, cold and clammy. A whimper rose from the floor. Sarah? My voice cracked in the darkness. No. A raspy whisper replied far too close to my ear. I shrieked, scrambling back until I hit a wall. My hand darted out, brushing against a dusty picturey frame. It clattered to the floor, shattering the silence. A faint glow flickered in the corner of my vision. 
I squinted, trying to make it out. It was a match slowly burning down in a skeletal hand. The hand was attached to a bony arm, protruding from beneath a tattered cloak. Terror choked my scream. It wasn't Sarah. The figure before me was the emaciated, skeletal thing, its face hidden in shadow. Its eyes, however, glowed with an unnatural orange light. Who? Who are you? I stammered, my voice barely above a whisper. The figure didn't answer. Instead, it began to move towards me, its steps slow and deliberate. I scrambled back, my breath rasping in my throat. My back hit the wall again, offering no escape. My eyes darted around the room, desperate for a weapon, anything. The Fallon picture of frame caught my eye. It was heavy, with a sharp edge. Grasping it tightly, I pointed it at the approaching figure. Stay back! I yelled, surprised by the strength in my voice. The viewer stopped, its head tilting to the side as if studying me. The orange glow from its eyes intensified. Suddenly, a loud banging sound echoed through the house, followed by a crash. The figure whipped its head toward the sound, its grotesque form momentarily distracted. This was my chance. With a surge of adrenaline, I lunged forward, shoving past the figure and scrambling towards the open doorway. I didn't look back. I sprinted blindly down the hallway, my lungs burning, the frantic thud of my feet the only sound in the deathly silence. I burst out of the house, gasping for air. There, under the harsh sunlight, stood Sarah. She was wrestling with the red door, trying to pry it open. Relief washed over me so strong I almost fell to my knees. Sarah! I cried, my voice hoarse. She turned, her face a mask of terror. Michael, you're all right? Thank God. She rushed towards me, flinging her arms around me. I held her tight, burying my face in her hair, the fear and adrenaline slowly draining away. What happened? Sarah asked, pulling back slightly. There... there was something in there. I stammered, unable to articulate the horror I had just witnessed. Suddenly, a new, deeper boom resonated from within the house. The red door creaked open a fraction further. A wave of that same cloying sweetness hit us, stronger now. Let's get out of here, I yelled, grabbing Sarah's hand. We sprinted back to the car, not daring to look back. I tossed my bag in the back and jumped into the driver's seat, my hands shaking as I started the engine. The moment the car roared to life, I slammed it into reverse and tore out of Whispering Pines. We didn't stop until we were well out of sight of the town, the dust devils swirling ominously in the distance like mocking laughter. Neither of us spoke for a long time. The silence was different now, no longer oppressive but filled with unspoken questions and a chilling uncertainty. What do you think it was? Sarah finally asked, her voice barely a whisper. I shook my head, unable to answer. What I had seen... What I had felt in that house defied explanation. One thing was certain. Whispering pines held a darkness far deeper than a forgotten utopia, and whatever resided within those skeletal houses, it wasn't ready to let go of its secrets. Weeks later, the memory of whispering pines still clung to use like a bad dream. The image of the skeletal figure with glowing eyes burned into my mind. Sarah, usually the more adventurous one, became withdrawn haunted by the experience. One night, unable to sleep, I decided to do some research. Digging deeper than Sarah's initial article, I found snippets of information about Whispering Pines, all shrouded in an unsettling veil of secrecy. There were mentions of strange rituals, a charismatic leader who preached a twisted form of communal living, and a mass exodus that happened before the town's complete disappearance. Then, I found it. A single, weathered journal entry, attributed to a journalist who had visited Whispering Pines shortly before it vanished. The last line sent shivers down my spine. They weren't leaving. They were being... consumed. The next day I told Sarah what I found. Her eyes widened in horror. Consumed? She repeated, her voice barely a whisper. It doesn't say how, I admitted. But whatever happened in Whispering Pines, it's still there, and it might be spreading. The weight of that possibility settled heavily between us. We couldn't just ignore it. A week later, we were back on the road, heading back to Whispering Pines. 
This time, we weren't armed with just curiosity. We had the journal entry, a faint hope of uncovering the truth, and a growing determination to stop whatever evil lurked within those silent houses. As we approached the town, the wind seemed to pick up, whipping around us like a banshee's wail. The dust devils danced more wildly than before, a chilling welcome. The sun, usually a bold presence in Wyoming, seemed obscured by a hazy veil. We parked the car at the edge of the deserted street. Taking a deep breath, I gripped Sarah's hand. Ready? I asked. She nodded, her eyes filled with a newfound resolve. Together, we walked towards the red door, the silence broken only by the relentless wind and the pounding of our hearts. This time we weren't leaving empty-handed. We were going in, determined to face the darkness head-on, and hopefully find a way to break the chilling secret that Whispering Pines held captive.